Thank you for choosing the SNL Podcast. I'm your host, Just Some Guy Named Jay. And what we'll be doing in this installment of the SNL Podcast is we will be reviewing the Christoph Waltz and Alabama Shakes episode. But before I do that, I'd like to give a shout out. I want to give a shout out to the Giant Blast. The Giant Blast is one of the largest email blast distribution lists on the web today with over 100,000 email accounts subscribed. Not only is it a large email blast newsletter for entertainment, they also do marketing and promotion for rising indie bands, singers, and rappers. So if you're looking to get your music heard by a broader audience, if you're a singer, rapper, or in a band, you should definitely check out the Giant Blast. Uh, also, if you have a product to sell or if you have a service to provide, using an email blast with the Giant Blast is a great way to create awareness for your product or service uh, to increase revenue. The Giant Blast, check them out. I'm going to put all the information in the information box below. All right. And uh, now let me talk about the Christoph Waltz episode. Uh, you know, you know how you had to break it down step by step. Uh, first, I want to say the cold opening was very funny, as always. The cold; these have been the best cold openings uh, in this season so far. I, I, if you disagree, definitely post your comments. But uh, this is they this 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 was another great cold opening. Um, Jay Farrow's bit was very good. Uh, you know, I think he should actually do this as a recurring character, like a stand-up comedian. I mean, cause since he's he's so uh, he's more comfortable doing impersonations. I think maybe he should do a, a a comedian character who does impersonations during his stand-up routine. That would be that would be tight. Maybe it could be an update character, or they should they could just do him in a setting where he's in a in a in a in a, in a, in a club or something, and he's doing that. I think that would definitely work, you know, um, because I mean, principal principal Fry is good, but I mean, I think he needs he, he needs a, little, a few more hot characters. Um, the newspaper bit that was very great, where he talked about the kind of the the, <laughs> the things that was going on in the news, and the uh, that 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 bit was good in that skit. Um, the whole skit, everything was very good. Uh, the only thing I really wasn't feeling is Tim Robinson. Um, the actually what was said was funny, like the line was funny, the the premise of his part was funny, but I don't think Tom uh, Tom Robinson, I don't think Tim Robinson really delivered on that. You know, um, if they had maybe Bobby Moynihan or something. I mean, I know Bobby Moynihan played the animal guy. But uh, I don't know. Somebody else probably would have made that part better. Tim Robinson just cannot. I don't know. He's just too. Uh, like, like, oh, my God. Maybe Paul Britton would have made that funny. Um, but, you know, Paul Britton's no longer part of the show, show of course. Uh, Keenan Thompson blurting out things. That was funny. You could just tell it was him. You know his voice. <laughs> Fred Armisen was good as the as the as the crazy cap uh, you know that that was funny but uh and this is I think this is the first time Fred has been funny this season since the uh since uh, him doing the uh what's his character the Roger Brush in the season premiere <laughs> Fred Armisen this has been his this has been his worst year this were his worst season I, in, my, in my opinion he 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 has been very stale in a lot of skits he hasn't done anything that was really that that's been really uh, that great. Um, it's just time for Fred to go, and I and he's not going out with a bang either. He's going out like oh, you know, like because I remember Tracy Morgan and Chris Kattan, they went out with a bang, you know, like well, I'm gonna say a bang, but they they, they kind of stepped their performances up for their last season, you know. Fred Armisen is just kind of like uh, you know, he's just kind of he's just kind of half stepping with it, you know. Um. What do you what do you all think about that? I also want to say during the introduction too, that didn't sound like Don Pardo. <laughs> it sounded more like Bill Hader trying to do an impersonation of Don Pardo or something. I don't know, it, 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 and and I know they're not you know like I don't know what parts where Don Pardo will say things, um, you know like introducing the next uh, upcoming host. Uh, it's dead silence, you know. I don't know what's going on. I mean, he's like 95 or something years old. Uh, the monologue was great. Uh, Christoph Waltz really came out and, and did his thing. The you know the the, the little stereotypes, the the Austrian stereotype that was that was good. Um, Taryn's bit was funny. I like the way Taryn 
Taron is a good physical comedian. Like he 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 he's really good at the physical stuff. The way he turns his head, the way he moves, and and the way he dances and kind of shakes his body and stuff. That he he's 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 definitely a physical guy. He should definitely do more physical. And the reason I brought that up is when he did the casual Hitler. Other than him saying hi all that 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 was funny, but the way he came in with his head turned to the side and he turned around and revealed he was had the little Hitler mustache, that was funny. Like the way he walked the way he walked in there. Like I, I noticed little things like that. Like the little movements and little facial expressions, like oh my god, Terrence's a physical guy. He should definitely uh do more skits that allow him to, you know, put his body into the comedy. You know. Uh, but yeah, I was really feeling the monologue. I mean, I, I kind of, I mean, they, they did more singing, which I'm not really a fan of the singing monologues. They've been doing them all this season. Uh, even if you can sing good, I just don't, I, I, I like Louis C.K. type monologues where they just come out, tell jokes and keep it moving. Even Charles Barkley did it when he hosted last time. Just came out, told jokes, no singing, no cast member interactions, no uh, having the audience ask questions, none of that. Just be funny. Do a funny monologue. They're not even monologues anymore. They're more like dialogues. You know? Well, well. anyway, um, I did I did enjoy it, though. With that being said, I did I did enjoy it. I talked all that junk about a monologue, and I said I enjoyed it at the end. Yeah, it, it, was, it was quite entertaining. Uh, the game show skit was funny. 80 was definitely great in it. Uh, the host, Christoph Waltz. It's good to see a host get a role like that. Because usually it's like Bill Hader or somebody or Jason Sudeikis playing the um, you know, the game show host. And maybe the, uh, the, uh, the host will be a contestant. But it was good to see a little switch like that. Um, you know, and he, and he definitely did his thing. Uh, and I also noticed that the audience laughed at the, uh, the audio messing up. <laughs> like that, you know, when they were supposed to introduce the game show, they the audience laughed at that part. You know. <laughs> now uh, I've been reading on the uh, the SNL message boards and things like that. That a lot of people aren't feeling Nassim's Tippy character. I like it. I liked it. They, they, she definitely did her thing on this. Um, I know people have been saying it's like a rip off of a Sherry O'Terry character, um, but I, I mean, I liked it. They had a lot of good jokes in it. Uh, Nassim ripped it like she was like, oh, "What's going on over there?" I mean, the, the way she, the way she delivered, I, I can definitely get used to this character. Um, I actually like this better than uh, than Belinda, you know. Um, you know, and, and I'm glad Nassim's finally getting to do more things this season because Nassim has been kind of uh, Nassim has been doing an impersonation of Abby Elliott <laughs> for the first half of the season, you know. Moving right along to the uh, the video. Oh, I've, I. I I forgot to talk about the um about the Pope retiring. I, I skipped that in my notes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was good. <laughs> it it was good, even though I didn't. Um, dang, my notes are all over the place. Um, yeah, they did. They did. They did that thing in the uh, the Pope skit. But uh, but the 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 film the film skit that I was definitely feeling, and this is a classic. Jesus uncrossed. That was it, it. Was beautiful. It was great. Uh, the, the 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 fake trailer. It was it was great. The action. Even the action was funny. I like. <laughs> they had the blood spilling on the statues and the little quotes that Jesus was saying. Uh, he was all he was he was standing on water shooting. That was oh my god. That was funny. Uh, they said, <laughs> the reviews where they said this is a this is a, a less a less a more tame less violent version of the past of the cross. Pastor of the Christ, that that had me that had me rolling, and he said uh, it, it surprised me how much Jesus used the N word. That, that, oh my God, they 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 that this was this was this was beautiful. Saturday Night Live, it, oh my God, it, this this was beautiful. They, they, they this was a classic a classic skit. This should be on some best of DVD. Uh and 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 and, and, and yeah, they, 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 yeah, there's nothing more I can really say. It was a classic. It was funny. Can't really criticize it, you know. Um, the Jamarcus brothers, uh, that was kind of meh, you know, because this premise. I mean, these kind of skits have been done before, you know, and you kind of knew where they were going with it. And um, Taryn pretty much had the best line of the skit at the end, where he said, "I couldn't get a boner right now if I tried." <laughs> like you know, that, that was great. 
Um, Cecily did her thing, and it, I mean, Cecily always does her thing. The Jamarcus, I mean, it was just, it was just kind of, oh man. Uh, I mean, now, even though I'm saying that, uh, the host really did kind of, he, he performed good in it, you know, but it was just one of those overdone types, one note, one joke type skits that, you know, that, that you get tired of. Now, you know, now moving on, I don't judge the musical guests like I always say. But uh, I'd like to say the the Britney, the, the you know the Britney, uh, what, what was her name? Britney of the uh, Alabama Shakes, the lead singer. Uh, that was I liked that song. I really did. The the, the hold on or, or whatever it was called. Um, and I also like to say she has a really big mouth. <laughs> you know, like I'm not not the judge. And I, now you know you can't really say anything. You know, it's, it's like some kind of unspoken thing where you can't say anything negative about. Uh, now that's not—I don't think that's negative. That's a compliment. She has a big mouth that she can, she can actually belt out the, uh, <laughs> the 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 vocals of what she's doing. But I mean, you can just look at her mouth. Wow! But it was a, it was a beautiful song. I was really feeling it. Um, the performance was good. Uh, but like I said, that doesn't that doesn't take away from the show or not. You know, the overall grade of what I'm gonna give it. Uh, let's see. Um, what else? What else I want to say about this? Uh, oh yeah, another thing too. Uh, I, I found out that uh, Britney's only twenty-five years old, <laughs> and she sounds like some old, old soul singer or something. You know, uh, you know. I didn't. And she, I, I didn't think she was twenty-five too. You know, it's something. She looks kind of old. Uh, you know, older than that. I guess the the mature way that she carries herself. You know, it's great. I'm going to download the hell out of this song. Anyway, um, moving right along. Weekend update. This was the... This is Seth Meyers at his worst. A lot of people have been throwing rocks at Seth Meyers, talking about, oh my God, he's, this, he's been terrible. This was actually the worst weekend update. I mean, as far as, as far as Seth Meyers. His jokes were not on point. They were just so... They were kind of childish, kind of. They were kind of childish jokes, you know. They they weren't really that funny. They were they were like, you know, he just he didn't he didn't kill it, you know. Um, his delivery is kind of always good, the, his rhythm, but uh, but the jokes just weren't they weren't hitting, you know. Uh, Taron Killam as uh, Senator uh, Marco Rubio, that was that bit was okay. You knew where they were going with it, of course. But like I said, Seth's a physical guy, and he and he did like I said, he did another skit that allowed him to put his, his facial expressions and his body movements and things, and and that made it funny. Especially, I liked the part more at the end when he was like, "Do I go up? Do I go up? Down? Down? Left? What? That that was great, uh, you know. But really, what made Weekend Update? Uh, what saved it was Kate McKinnon's bit is that Oya woman from the uh, whatever country she came from. I didn't write it down. <laughs> Guys should have been looking at the news. Anyway, uh, everything came out of her mouth was comedy gold. Like, especially the part where she was talking about, uh, oh, I stay with my great-great-grandmother. Because I was thinking that she was supposed to be like an older woman or something. The, the way she was dressed and her accent. And she was like, no, I'm only 18 years old. <laughs> and I'm the hottest girl in my village. <laughs> like, if that's the hottest girl in your village. And then they said, you, they sing, they, sing, they sing sad songs to the children. That was, that was funny. They said the children are already sad. <laughs> We're in a cold, harsh country. The bear with me type bit, that was funny. If They should bring this, they, Kate McKenna should bring this character back. And she should talk about more depressing things. That's funny. The way she described the depressing things, that was hilarious. And uh, they should definitely do this. She should she should make a character out of this, you know. Uh, Jay Farrell, Stephen A. Smith, it was all right. You know, could have did without it. But it, it's always good to see Jay Farrell doing his thing. Did I call him Jeff? I, I, I wouldn't say Jeff. Anyway, uh, Jay Farrell, like a, like a combination between Jay and Farrell, Jeff. Nah, that's that's not gonna work. You know, he reminds me a lot of Jeff Richards, though. Uh, you know, Jeff Richards when he was in the cast, like a black version of Jeff Richards, where he's actually good at doing impersonations, but he's he's like he's kind of like eh at other things, you know. But uh, but I but I I think Jay is a little more entertaining than Jeff. Well, I don't know. I I guess I could do another podcast, you know, breaking down the similarities. 
But uh, but moving right along, what really this this episode was was really good. That, um, except for there's a few spots here and there that kind of brought it down. It wasn't flawless. Uh, the one skit that really, really, really brought this down was Fred as Regine. That was whack. Get rid of Fred. He needs to get fired. I'm not feeling it. Like they, they, there's no way they can make that work. Even the even the even the cast breaking you know breaking character. Now bring back Roger Brush or bring back Ferrisito or something. You know Sarah Ferrisito was a good character. Well, I mean, if Fred Armisen needs to keep doing the same crap over and over again, bring out some, bring back some crap that worked, you know. Uh, let's see, the Fox and Friends skit, it was great. Uh, Bill Hader's bit as Ted, New, uh, you know, uh, yes, Ted Nugent, that was good. Um, it seemed like it could have been a cold opening, actually, and it seemed like uh, it was maybe it was supposed to be a cold opening. But they switched it at the last minute or something. Like they, they decided to make the, the cruise ship part the uh, the cold opening. I don't know. It just it just had that feel to it. Uh, the final skit that was good. The secret admirer. The thing that really kind of slowed down the rhythm of it was uh, was Christoph Waltz uh, kind of flubbing his lines a little. If he didn't mess up his lines, this would have been a would have been a very great skit because everybody killed it. Um, the premise was good. It was even, I mean, you know, it was good. Everybody delivered on it. Like how, how, how Christoph Waltz wrote the freaky Valentine's letter to Cecily's character. And then it was obviously him, but she just couldn't get that. And, 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 and he was trying to pretend like it wasn't him after she started talking about how freaky it was. That, that was great. And then Kenan's part at the end, that, that, that was great. Uh, this has been, this has been Kenan's best year. One of his best years. This Last year was good for Keenan too, but uh, this has been like Keenan's best year and Fred Armisen's worst year, you know. And they're the two vets of the cast right now. Um, but yeah, overall, I like to say Christoph Waltz. Um, I'd like to see him again. I mean, he did his thing. Um, it seemed like he really enjoyed being there. He put his all into. He really committed to the characters and really brought his all to the. Uh, well, I mean, he really brought some. He really brought some heat with him, you know. Um, really wasn't expecting that. Didn't think he was. He was gonna really, uh, you know, deliver the way he did. But he did. Um, that's all I'd like to say, though. Uh, again, I'd like to give another shout out to the Giant Blast. You need email blast. Need something to advertise? Definitely check them out. And um, you know, that's all I'd like to say. I'm just some guy named Jay. Good night and have a pleasant tomorrow.